Well, hey Dana, my name is Mike Reichenbach. I'm with the University of Minnesota Extension and glad to be here at your property on the North Shore of Lake Superior. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and the property? Well, my name is Dana Dixon. Um, this property has been in my family since 1926. Um, I'm one of the beneficiaries and a trustee of the family trust that owns the property. When my great-grandparents bought it, it was covered with old-growth northern white cedar. Um, in 1926, very shortly after they purchased it, fire came through, um, Kramer fire came through, and everything was gone. Um, the logs that they were going to use to build the cabin were gone, the, the woods around it was gone. I think what one of the things that makes this property unique is we are trying to do reforestation is that it has essentially been unmanaged um, since 1926. Nature has taken its course for 90 years. Oh, thank you, Dana. So tell me a little bit about uh, why you're interested in planting trees. I well, let's see, two years ago I took the uh, Lost Forest Restoration class down at Sugarloaf. You were one of the instructors. Um, that kind of inspired me to get a little more technical about this. We tried in the past, my brother planted a bunch of uh, white cedar in a grove up there. We planted one or two white pines over the years, um, but I always had this vision in the back of my mind that I'd like to see the forest back. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the birch are dying. It's really changed remarkably in the 60 years that I've been around this property. Um, I can remember as a kid, the woods were so thick that I could be three feet from the road and people couldn't see me. Um, I wasn't moving through the woods and I was invisible because the brush was so thick. And now um, the undergrowth is gone and the um, birch are starting to disappear as well. Um, and I've seen up on the hill what happens if we just let it go again. It's going to come back as a monoculture of white spruce that to my mind is essentially a sterile forest. There just won't be much for plant diversity. There won't be much for animal or bird diversity. Um, and I'd like to you know, try to set it back to some of the diversity that is possible on the shore. Okay. So when we talk about diversity, what type of species do you like to plant? Last year I planted 50 um, cedar and white pine. This year I'm planting 70 trees. Um, we'll see how it goes and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. So when you're out planting, how, how do you pick the sites? How many, how, how far apart are the trees? What, what do you look for? Well, I'm trying to get about 10 um, stems to the acre. Okay. I'm leaving, assuming that the the white spruce are taking care of themselves, so I'm trying to get the, the white cedar and the white pine in there, about 10 to an acre. Um, minimum, I try to be at least 30 feet apart. Maximum, somewhere up around 50 feet apart. Uh, selecting where you want to plant the tree. Um, sometimes you don't have a lot of choice up here. There's The ledge rock is very close to the surface. And if I see a nice open area and take my planting bar and it goes thunk, I know I've got to move and plant somewhere else. Um, and frankly, some of the places that the trees have volunteered where the, the spruce are growing are probably the best places to have a tree, but there's already a tree there. So I put them where I can. Sometimes they're a little closer than I'd like, sometimes a little farther apart than I'd like get a spot where you know, there's some light, but the canopy is disappearing here. It's 
the undergrowth is gone, the canopy is going, so the light really isn't a, a criteria. It's where I can get a, ground, a bar in the ground and get a long enough trench to plant a tree is the real criteria.